and that thing exploded. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a subscriber, welcome back. Today, I am going to help a friend out. Her name is Dee of Dee Lovely Life, and I'll put her link to her channel down below by doing a cleaning video. And congratulations, Dee, on 5,000 subscribers. Go, girl. So, I'm going to clean as much as I can before my doctor's appointment. It is right now 1144. I have to leave at 2 o'clock to get a piece of metal removed out of my finger. I had a superheat explosion in the kitchen and I used, it got all over my camera so I couldn't use my camera to film what had happened so I used my cell phone. So, so I'll insert that video clip right now. If anybody can explain this to me, I was just cooking some broth on the stove. I have a casserole in the oven and there was nothing in it. It was just plain broth. Wasn't even up to a complete boil. And that thing exploded. I mean, it is everywhere. It's all over the countertops. It's all over the floor. It's all over the range. I wiped the thing off to turn everything off. I don't know if it was a small gas explosion or what. Let me walk around it. I mean, it got all the way in here. I was standing right here when it got it. I knocked the, the uh, carrots out of my hands. But I was standing right here, and that thing exploded. All I heard was a whoosh. And every bit of that liquid, it was almost to the, it was about to right there. And just every bit of it exploded right out. I've never seen anything like this. Even the gas in the, in the oven turned off. So I don't know what in the hell happened, but it did. My side of my face is a little burned, but it's just heat. What a friggin' mess. Okay, now that I've calmed down, and I think I figured it out. I think. I was over here uh, finishing up dishes. I had set my camera right here. I was over here doing dishes, and I looked over here, and I said, man, that flame is just awfully super high. I mean, it was high like that, weird high. And so I said, okay, I'm just going to turn it down. So I turned it down to about here, which is about a little on the medium side of low. And I just left it there. Let me turn it down. And literally, I turned and got the carrots off the, the bag of carrots off the countertop, and I walked over here. Now that was that liquid was not boiling at all. And I walked over here. I had the bag of carrots in my hand. I was doing something. I, I think I was trying to close a window or something on my computer, or either hit play or something. And I was trying to put the carrots in the bag at the same time. And I mean, just out of nowhere, there was liquid all in my hair, on the side of my face, all over here. But it wasn't as bad over here. There was some on my computer, and I have one of these silicone things, and I hope it's going to be okay and didn't get in this area. Uh, it did get on the wall, and it got all up in here. I'm cleaning all of that. The, ma the majority of the liquid went this way so it got all over my camera I have no idea how my camera's gonna fare I cleaned it as best as I could and I've got it you know just airing out but it's all the fat that I'm worried about you know all the grease so I'm just gonna leave it alone the only conclusion that I can come to is that it was a super heat super you know it got super heated and according to my research that sometimes if it's a new pot or a smooth pot on the inside it doesn't come to a rolling boil sometimes and it just can't boil and release all that energy so it just explodes because I'm telling you the water was or the liquid was up to here 
when that explosion happened, there was about half of what's in there now left. So the ceiling got spared. I cleaned all this. I mean, it was just covered. I mean, it was just everywhere. I have never experienced anything like that. If you think that that's what happened, please let me know in the comment section. I just don't know how something so small can hurt so bad. You see that? It's already starting to callus over. And at first, I mean, the doctor, one doctor said he thought it was a wart. And I'm like, no, I remember I was moving that freezer out in the apartment and a piece of metal was, had flaked off and then it got into my finger and it started to callus over. And I know it looks small and insignificant, but when it's where everything you touch and it just keeps stabbing you over and over and over again, uh, it's gotta go. So I have to get everything clean before I go down to the doctors because uh, I'm sure it's gonna hurt after he removes this. Now I cleaned the bulk of it up. I got the stove pretty much clean. Uh, I mean, I had to just totally almost disassemble the whole thing. And thank God, I mean seriously, thank God that I put clear silicone along the sides of my stove and countertop. So none of that ran down in there because I bolted this uh, gas stove to the floor for you know, safety concerns. And so I've got to clean leaves on the bamboo, which you can see right here. I've got to clean the leaves on this one and the one over there. I've wiped down the countertops. I've wiped down the cabinets. Um, I got the air vent up here cleaned. That was... And I pressure washed the rug outside. I would have videotaped that, but for some reason I couldn't get my balance, my white balance to straighten up. And so everything's like super bleached out. I'm going to give a few cleaning tips on top of everything. Cleaning tips. Ladies, if you don't have one of these, invest in one. I call it a janitor's mop. Janitor's broom, whatever. And instead of pushing that vacuum cleaner back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you just sweep along, you just push this along, gather everything, put it in a pile, and then use your vacuum cleaner to suction up the pile. And then you just vacuum your rugs. And I see so many girls on these videos vacuuming hardwood floors or sweeping. Now when you sweep with a broom, you kick up all that dust and all it does is resettle on your food, on your appliances. Sweeping, I don't suggest inside of a home. I suggest that you just use a dust mop. So that's what I'm gonna do here first. And I've already got the dishes done and Let's see, I just got to clean the rest of this chicken stock up and then we're good to go. So I hope you enjoy. I'm going to turn on some music and for me and I'm going to put on some music for you. So sit back and enjoy. So this cuts down on your electric bill. And for those of you who are new to the channel, I'm living in a construction zone. I'm going on year two of working on the interior of this house. The exterior is pretty much done except for getting the new roof put on. Um, and the only interior thing I need to do is finish the den back here. There, I'll put up a link here about what happened back there. And I'm going to gut this bathroom and put in 12 by 24 inch tile. I've got to repair the joist under the house and, rep and replace all the plumbing. I'm gonna make this bathroom where you can just roll right in and you know, I'm trying to prepare for when I get older. And I'm trying to make this house as ergonomically uh, friendly and ADA. And I'm, you know, I'm just preparing for my future. I can't make this door any wider and you cannot get a wheelchair through here. So what I'm thinking is, this is the wall to the bathroom. There's nothing on this wall on the other side. So I was thinking about putting in a bigger door. That way I have access to the bathroom oh, and just wheel right in. I'm gonna make it a big wet room, basically, is what I'm gonna do. Um, it's very popular in Italy and in 
northern Asia just to have these big wet rooms where everything is tiled and you can get everything wet. Your sink, your toilet, doesn't matter. And I find that to be a little bit better as far as uh, cleanliness and uh, I just I just think it's just a better idea. And yes, I, I had a butcher block left over. I've got plywood and sheetrock in my, uh, I don't know what you call this, hallway, I guess. Here's some other tips. You know, there's really inexpensive curtain holders you can get, I guess at Walmart, whatever. They're like $2 at that. You should hang them up there where your laundry center is and that way you can hang things to dry because I only wash my microfiber with microfiber. If you wash your microfiber with anything else, you're gonna have dust and lint left behind when you clean with your microfiber. So just wash it with microfiber. And don't use detergent. Use bleach only. Instead of throwing my dirty rags inside the laundry hamper to sour, I put them up there, let them dry, you know, until I have enough to make a full load. Plus, it's great to be able to hang your clothes up on something when you put them on a hanger. It comes in, you know, handy as well. That's for those who don't have a lot of room like me. My house is only 1,100 square feet. This is an addition. This is a closed-in porch. I do not use Windex and I do not use dusting spray. Um, I just use a damp microfiber and it gets everything spotless and it doesn't leave streaks. It saves you on furniture polish and it saves you on window cleaner. This is all you need is a damp microfiber. Another cleaning tip is when you're mopping your floors, mop from the cleanest room to the dirtiest. That way you're not just smearing everything around. Some people don't like to mop at all, which is fine. Some people like sponge mops, some people like mops like I have, some like the little whirly kind. Personally, what I really, really would like is, it has two spinning brushes on it. 
I don't know who makes it, but I'll look it up and put a link down below. But that's what I really want, but I just don't know if I trust it on hardwood floors. My dad came down here to help me with the den and uh, he saw all these, you know, filming lights and my camera was in here. <laughs> trust me, he started asking questions about that.